So could you tell us if there was a moment or an event that led you to begin researching and writing Bananas, Beaches and Bases? And hmm. what, what were you trying to achieve with the book? So I wrote, this is an embarrassing figure. This is not a figure to celebrate. I wrote about six books um, without any feminist curiosity at all. I didn't deny feminism. I didn't deny gender. I didn't, I was stupid and I just didn't know to look. And so I was teaching a lot about militarism, or actually about militaries, that's a difference. Um, and I was teaching a lot about Southeast Asia um, and I really came of age academically in the middle of the US Vietnam War. Um, and uh, by this time I was at my second post in the US at a small university where I still am, a very good university outside of Boston called Clark University. And here's the moment. I can really picture, there was a Vietnam War teaching well after, well no, as maybe as the US was extricating itself militarily from Vietnam. And it was a campus, well, I mean, our campus is very, it still is a very progressive campus and students get involved in things which is just great and we have teach-ins. And so there was a teach-in on the Vietnam War and there was a guy in my department, very nice guy, whose name was Charlie. What was Charlie's last name? But I can picture him. Nice, very nice guy. Mm -hmm. And Charlie was the only one in, on our faculty who had actually been a draftee, who had been a conscript in the US military sent to Vietnam. And it was quite wonderful that he was willing to speak at um, this teach-in. And what I remember is the room was, was kind of a basement room. I remember he went down to it. So I can picture the whole setting. And Charlie was talking about his experience as a very ordinary soldier, American soldier, in Vietnam. And, it was, and he was very critical and he, he was just great and very modest and wasn't telling war stories. And, but as he talked, he said something about what the base setup was like that he and other American soldiers had. And he was describing the bases and he described the Vietnamese women who soldiers individually could hire to do their laundry, All right? And in American militarized racist, I would say, language, the soldiers, like Charlie, called them hooch girls, all right? Hooch being a, a, a small house. Um, and sitting there, I thought, what if one sees the whole Vietnam War through this woman's eyes? What does the, what does the Vietnam War look like? Not only the US Vietnam War, the French Vietnam War. If she were in her late 20s, she'd lived through the French Vietnam War. And right sitting there, I began thinking, what if? Because I had begun to teach women's studies courses, but hadn't had the guts yet to write anything. Mm -hmm. I, I just was being pushed by students to do a couple of small pieces, but that was the first. And once I began thinking about, well, what, where else are women? Because uh, at this point I was doing a lot on political economy as well. And this book that Anita mentions, this is the new edition called Bananas, Beaches and Bases. And once again, it has Carmen Miranda, the Brazilian um, wonderful <coughs> comedian and singer on the front. And you can ask me why. I'm, covers are very political. Right? Try to keep control of your covers. You will have a hard time keeping control of your covers, but try to keep control of your covers. Um, and that was really the beginning, to imagine what would the Vietnam War look like through one woman's eyes, or a woman in her position's eyes. And that made me begin to think, well, what would the politics of rubber look like? Because when I was in Malaysia, I lived in an apartment that, where the cement was practically still wet right next to a rubber plantation. And I watch rubber tappers every morning, early, early, early in the morning. So I began thinking, well, what would the international politics of Dunlop 
you know, a big rubber producer, look like from a rubber tapper's point of view. So that was really the start. That, just that question, which of course I didn't know the answer to. Mm -hmm. right? I mean, I'd started not because I knew things. I started because I realized I didn't 